<laughs> oh man, this ain't my day. I understand things. I got out of bed this morning, just not doing. You know, I just. Oh. Hello and welcome to this assembly tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be quickly covering all the basics of using assembly. A lot of you have probably recently gotten Reach for the PC and you're looking for uh, making these modifications that you've always dreamed of. And so we're going to cover the basics of how you, you will be using this program uh, to do that. So once you have installed assembly, you will see this start page where it shows you the first options that are available to you, as well as the recent maps that you have opened up. So we can open up a map and it will show first this header, which is basically a display for all of this data. It shows us this type of map, the build information, uh, the game that this map was for, internal name, scenario name, etc. You also see these other options, tag, strings, scripts, and network. Uh, if we go to tags, you will see uh, all of these categor categorical uh, entries. If we go to weapons and we can see uh, the Falcon side gun, uh, the needler, all of this information is under tags. And uh, these are different for every mission that you open. So if you open up a campaign mission, you, ha you may have more, you may have less. Uh, it may be different completely. Um, so just keep that in mind. On the next section, you'll see strings. And strings is, is basically uh, has... It's basically, strings are basically displays for the player. Uh, that's what I like to think of. So we can go and we can say that, okay, so we have a rocket launcher and we have swap and then it has, you know, AI. So this is basically saying hold uh, button action generic to take allies rocket launcher. So this button action generic is whatever their action key is set to same with here the switch weapon is whatever the player's uh, switch weapon function uh, is key bind to so that's player dependent and that is how you get across to the player all right you're out of ammo you need to switch weapons press this button to do that and that is all on them really uh, so if they have space key set to jump then if they, it says press space to jump then that is just them saying use your use whatever key you have set to uh, to do this function and that's basically all strings are so if you do things like tag injection or you create a uh, vehicle entry or weapon entry then you may need to be um, using strings so that the player knows that they can do this or they can do that you also have scripts and then you have network and we're going to be looking at this a little bit more in depth for now let's go to tags and if we go to, say, our weapon tag, you'll see that all these things uh, are here. But let's say we wanted to extract something from this map and put it into another map. Well, let's say, let's, uh, let's extract the Sabre Gatling gun. So in order to do this, you need to select it first by left clicking and then you're going to right click it and you'll see a number of options you can rename you can duplicate force load extract add to extract list add or remove bookmarks save and load bookmarks all of that well then we can extract this particular tag and we can say this is going to be test one and then we can pull up our tag so I am uh, so this says extraction successful so basically that means that you have successfully extracted that tag and now it's ready to be injected somewhere else so basically what you're doing um, is you are basically extracting a particular part of a map and you are uh, importing it somewhere else you're installing it somewhere else so this is a saber gatling gun weapon and it's now ready to be uh, basically injected into another map. So we can go to, I can exit out of Forge underscore Halo, and I can go to Mission 35, I can go to Tags, and I can import, and I will see that this tag container file is ready for me to import it. And that is the basics of how you inject a tag into something else. You can do this with Pelicans, you can do this with uh, weapons. Um, I think right now there are some problems with sound injection, so uh, you may, you may have to work around that, um, but certainly, of course, that is a great tool to have in your toolbox. So now let's go back to network. So this is a new feature 
um, or it will be a new feature in the main build. Uh, right now I'm using a different version of assembly that has this. Um, but what network poking is, is basically there is a, a server or a host and there are clients that can connect to the server. So let's say you are a in-game customs host, but you want everyone uh, that is making mod uh, modifications to your game, uh, well, for those changes to be universal. So let's say you had you and four of your buddies. Uh, you all were messing around in Forge. Uh, you were the, uh, the lobby host in game, so you would be the server host, and they would be the clients. And all of your changes would be seen by each other. So if you make a change to a fog, then they would see the change to a fog. If you made a change to projectiles, then they would see a change to the projectiles, and they wouldn't have to be host if they were making these changes too. So keep that as my uh, keep that in mind as well. Uh, also, a downside of this: if they do something that breaks the game, then that will consequently break the game for you. So it's good to experiment uh, or make sure you're playing with someone um, that kind of knows what they're doing before you go into this. Uh, otherwise, you can crash your game a lot and that's certainly not enjoyable uh, when you're in a big group especially when everybody it happens to everybody uh, so uh, with that being said you will see a remote address and a port uh, you can leave a port the same in most circumstances uh, and I'm, I'm I'm sure there will be someone that has uh, strict settings for a router and you may have to port forward uh, I haven't had to I don't know of anyone that ha has had to port forward yet um, but you also see the remote address, which is your IBV4 address. You can find that by typing, what is my IP? Uh, there are a variety of sites that have that uh, function, and you can just use that IPv4 address. Now, if you are using a dynamic IP or an IPv6, IPv6 um, you shouldn't have any problems with using a IPv4 as long as your, you know, your lease is not expiring at the time that you're using assembly. Uh, most people won't have that problem. Um, and so that is how you will apply network poking. So that leaves us with only a couple more things to cover. If we go to tools, we can see all of these options here. We can go to Xbox and we can go to help. Uh, now help is really cool because you can go to map names and it will show you what the map is called in game and then what is its actual file name. So that is an extremely helpful function. And then uh, also something really cool is the Create, Apply, or Poke patch. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. It is very basic. Um, but you can go to uh, the unmodified map, select a uh, map that you want to be editing, and then you can select the map that has the edited changes. So this is the modified. This is the vanilla. And then we have somewhere, or we need to have somewhere where we can uh, place this patch. So I'm going to call this test two. So this is where the patch will be. And notice that it is a ASMP. So this is a patch file. It's not a map file. Then we have patch name, test two, patch author. So we have author, patch description, a required file name. And then patch preview image. You can change the image if you want. Our target game is Halo Reach, and then we can create assembly patch. It's going to take a couple seconds, <clears throat> and then you'll see that your patch has been created in a designated location. So let's say we wanted to apply that patch to a file. We can locate, this is our test2.asmp, and we can apply that patch to an unmodified map. So we have that, and then our output which we can just say uh, Forge Halo, and then we can apply that patch there. We can also poke patches in real time by simply finding that and then uh, poking that patch as well. So that is a great tool to use when you need to transfer uh, your changes to somebody else. Um, it's really good for things like teams who are working on a project together, uh, maybe not at the same time, but instead of transferring a 800 megabyte file, you're transferring, you know, a much smaller file. Now, obviously, patch size is dependent on what it is you're patching. Uh, it can be smaller or larger, but it is generally much smaller than the actual map file itself in this case. So um, 
The last thing that we'll cover in assembly is the settings. You can go to general and you will find the theme color. You can change it to whatever you want. Uh, two important things here are automatic updates and update channel. Make sure you have experimental selected and you have automatic updates or check for updates on startup. So that way you get the latest version when it comes out. So a couple problems if you encounter, or a couple prob problems that people encounter with assembly is an engine error. Um, make sure you have the latest version of assembly. That is usually what causes that problem. And then an anti-cheat error, which um, persists even if you launch the game through uh, the version with no anti-cheat enabled. Um, make sure that you launch assembly as admin first. Uh, from there, you might have to install assembly on a different drive or do um, you might have to do a variety of different things. Um, but this problem, uh, I think, comes from the uh, not having the right uh, properties uh, to be making these changes to something else. Um, so with that being said, I hope this video has been helpful to you as well. I will post a link to the assembly downloader in this uh, description. That is where you should be getting your version of assembly from uh, as well. So thanks again for watching and have a good one.